hear me? Can you all hear me? Amen. Amen. Let me pray with you. I don't even know how to come up after that worship. Amen. Come on, can I get an amen? I, I was all nervous right there thinking, do, am I supposed to speak, Lord? Because I think that the Lord just already did so much. Amen. I'm going to be honest with you. I was praying and asking God, after this worship, should I just say, let's all go home? Because the anointing of God was so heavy. And sometimes when the anointing of God is that heavy, I have, I'm praying and asking God, I don't want to mess anything up. Because it should never be about a man. It should be about the Lord and his spirit. Amen. And I felt finally the release of the Lord say, release a word. Amen. But man, I was, I was there. And I think that the more we press in and the more we seek after God and we chase and we pull heaven down, that's what it's all about. About having that encounter with God. About being healed without anybody even laying hands. About chains being broken while people are lifting up their hands and spiritual chains being broken of addiction, of mindsets. People being delivered, demons running out those doors at worship. Why? Because nothing can stand in the presence of a holy God. And when you and I pull heaven down, we're having heaven here on earth. So Father, I ask that you would continue to increase and that I would decrease. That Lord, what you've already done, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for the healings in advance. I thank you, Lord, for the chains that were broken. I thank you, Lord, for the mindsets, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Purpose. He showed somebody your purpose. I ask, Holy Spirit, that you would continue, Lord, just to move. Freely in this place, examine every heart and every mind and expose every lie. Anything and everything that would oppose itself against your word or your Holy Spirit, we cast to the pit of hell right now. And we declare your promise, your blessings in Jesus' mighty name. We all say, amen. amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap, amen. You may be seated. Look to your neighbor and tell him it's good to see you in the house of the Lord. Any first time visitors, anybody visiting us for the very first time, God bless you, my brother, amen. God bless you. What a blessing it is to see you, amen. We have a saying here at Living Word, amen, in, in Merced that, the first time you come, you're a guest, amen, but the second time, you're family, so come on back, amen. I'm not going to be long. But long enough, I don't know what that means, but I know that this Thursday is Thanksgiving, and we're getting ready to celebrate, amen. And I, I said this on Wednesday night, we had a powerful service here, amen. We heard testimonies. We, we seen Adam and Gabby got engaged, amen. Come on, congratulations to them. <laughs> Nothing but blessings over them. And I ate so much, I almost preached in sweats today, amen. But thank God. I really believe that as we celebrate Thanksgiving and we come together with family, amen. Um, Jocelyn's mother, brother. Yeah, good to see you, amen. Good to see you. Um, I really believe that as we get ready to celebrate for the holidays that we are gonna be the light. Amen, I said this on Wednesday. Don't be that one that eats and runs, amen. Let's be that one that is willing to show the 
the Christ in us by offering to wash those dishes or take out the trash or, you know, how can I help clean up? Amen? Because we, we need to be the representatives of Christ not only in the church but out there. Amen? Amen. So real, quick, real quickly, also one announcement. Don't forget, um, next Sunday we're going to pick up our end of the year offering. Amen? This is something that is special because so many of us at the beginning of the year we're like, man, I don't know how I'm going to make it through. It's a tough year. Things are getting more expensive. But how many of us know that God got us through? Amen? Come on, God is faithful. So it's a way of saying, God, thank you. Amen? And I know what I know the amount the Lord uh, has challenged me to give. Amen? And now I'm just by faith. I'm believing he's going to fill it, and he always will. Amen? Because I don't like to tip God. I like to give to the Lord. Right? Amen? From a right place. Like David said the other day, let it be a sacrifice. So I'm super excited for that. So that'll be next week on uh, next Sunday. Amen. But let me get into this message. I really believe that we are in a time that is so crucial as the church. Amen. As the church. Not the name Living Word. Not the name Hope. Not the name Outreach or, or Bethel or whatever. I'm talking about the ecclesia of God. The body of Christ coming together and walking in spiritual discernment. I believe that it is the time that the church needs to awaken in the spirit. Can I get an amen? amen. The church needs to be awakened in the spirit. How many of us know that we're living in this woke generation, amen, that everybody's coming out and everybody's getting these all these revelations and you know all these crazy things but the church, amen, it's the church that is grounded on the word of God. It's the church, amen, that has been equipped, amen, with the Holy Spirit to do what God has called us to do. Amen. It's not a time for the church to stay silent. It's not a time for the church, amen, to, to sit back and just pray about it and do nothing, amen. We have to begin to activate the spiritual gifts that God has given inside of us. As the church, amen, as the hands and the feet of Jesus, this is the time, amen, that we are to speak. This is the time, amen, that we are to pray against all that witchcraft. This is the time, amen, that we show up faithfully to the house of God, not just, oh, let them do it. Come on, anybody, ever, does anybody know what I'm talking about? Oh, I'm not going to give. Let them give. No, we got it together. Oh, I'm not going to show up to an outreach. Let them show up to an outreach. No, I don't want to do the prayer on, on Monday nights. I mean, that's why we, were, we did prayer for Monday nights for years. And it was the same 37 people all the time. And I said, no. I said, you know what? We, if, if God is going to move, we need to come together, amen, as the church. That means throw off the pajamas, turn off the YouTube, put away the pasta, and get to the house of God. To intercede, to pray, declaring that God is going to do something good. And I really believe that we're going to get ready to go to something different. Maybe, I don't know what God is leading us to, but I believe that God is wanting us to do more. And it's important for us to do it together. Come on, somebody say together. Yeah. As the church. But my message here is that the church needs to awaken. And I'm talking about awakening in the spirit, in the supernatural. The church of Jesus Christ, amen. We have, a, a, we have many churches and we have many Christians that are operating on goosebumps. Amen. On, on, uh, you know what I'm talking about? Oh, it had to be Lord. No, it was the AC. They just turned it up. You got to know when it's the AC and you got to know when it's the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because when you can learn to discern the things of the Holy Spirit, you will also discern the, th the things that are not of God. Amen. You get it. Tell it, sister. Tell it, sister angel. Okay. I'm going to tell it. Let me share with you what I mean. 
Sorry, our projector is down, amen, and, and the computer's down, and it's all down, but praise God, that be, probably just means we got to get a whole new one. Can I get an amen? I've been praying for a new one forever, amen, but I think it's time to just get it, amen? So here we go. How many of us know if, if it's God's house, he will provide, amen? If it's God's will, it's God's bill, amen? Here we go. Look at what the Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 3 through verse number 7. So this is where maybe God is just doing that because he wants us to bring our Bibles back. Amen. Because how many of us know, oh, they'll put it up. No, no. Hey, there's nothing like when you, shh, 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 you know. Can I get an amen? amen. Okay, here we go. Here we go. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 3 and 7, here is a warning to the church. And how many of us know that Warnings are very important. The red lights when you're driving, when, when, when you're going through an intersection and those lights begin to blink from yellow and going to go to red, it's a warning that you better stop. But sometimes people are thinking they can do whatever they want. They're above the law or they, they, you know, and they don't listen to the warnings. I believe that the Holy Spirit is warning his church of what is to come. Not only warning, but preparing. And here in the book of 1 Timothy, Paul is letting Timothy know and he says, when I left Macedonia, I urged you to stay there in Ephesus and stop those, listen to this, and stop those whose teaching is contrary to truth. Come on, can I get an amen? amen. How will you ever know if somebody is telling you a lie if you don't know the truth? I always use this demonstration of a counter. How many of us know that we're living in a knockoff world? Everything is knocked off now, amen? I mean, you can get a, a, a purse, amen, and it's not Fendi, it's Endy, amen? You know, I mean, you get shoes and they're not, you know, they're not Gucci, they're Fucci, you know? You, you, you got to be careful, amen? People's knocking off all kinds of stuff. But one thing, amen, that you have to focus on, and I use this all the time, is if you have a $100 bill, amen, and you have a counterfeit, that one counterfeit, you might be able to detect, but counterfeits come in many different ways. Amen? So, so this one may have passed the test or meant no. You caught this. Oh, wait a minute. This, I see the numbers. I see the ink. The paper's wrong. Amen. So you detect it and you catch it. But then there's other counterfeits and other counterfeits and other counterfeits. So we are not called to study what is counterfeit. Amen. We are called to study what is authentic, the word of God. Because when you study the word of God, immediately when something is not right, your spirit says, that's not in the Bible. This is wrong. Something is not right here. My spirit is grieved. Can I get an amen? amen? You don't have to say, ouch, yet. I'm preaching. Amen? So we have to understand that here is a warning, and he is saying again, let me read it all the way through, because I get excited, and I like to break down the scripture so the scripture can get inside of you, because if the scripture can get inside of you, it can change your life. We don't just come to hear a message and then say, what was the message about? I don't, it was good. But what did they say? I don't know, it was good. I want the message to get inside of you because if the message can get inside of you, you it begins to transform you and then you begin to walk out your life according to God's word. And you'll find the purpose for your life. Here we go. When I left in Macedonia, I urge you to stay there in Ephesus and stop those whose teaching is contrary to the truth. Don't let them waste their time in endless discussions and myths and spiritual pedigrees. These things only heed to meaningless speculations, which don't help people live a life of faith in God. You see that? How many of us know that Satan, amen, the Lord, there's no confusion in the Lord. 
Absolutely not. But how many of us know Satan is the author of confusion? If the, if the enemy can just get us to question, if the enemy can just get us to doubt, if the enemy can get us, amen, to begin to, well, I don't know. The Bible never says how you feel or what you know. We're living in a time where, I said this earlier today, people are like, ah, just do you. The Bible never says just do you. Just do Jesus. Come on, how many of you, how many of you have friends like that? Well, I don't know about that church stuff. Just do you, just do what makes you happy and end up in hell. See, they don't tell you that. People will tell you, oh, you got to do that. Oh, you're supposed to do this. Oh, that's too much. You drive how far? You're crazy. We got to be in the things of God. We can't allow people to discourage us, amen? Because how many of us know the wrong word, the wrong seed, amen? Because a uh, word is a seed. And once that seed is sown in the wrong place, if you're not spiritually in the things of God, I'll tell you what, the flesh is always looking for a way out. The flesh is always looking for a way to make an excuse. The flesh is always looking for something to tear down, whether it's the church, whether it's the pastor, whether it's the Bible. It doesn't matter. The flesh is always wanting to discredit what is truth. But when you know the truth, you don't trip. You stand on God's word and you know, amen, what I'm trying to get you to understand is that God's plan and God's purpose for your life, you know what it is. You may have had a bad season. You may have had a bad year. You may have had bad 10 years. But I'll tell you what, God is not done with you. And if God is not done with you, that means that the spirit of the living God is still upon your life. I'm trying. Who said that? Thank you. Amen. He says, don't let them waste their time in endless discussion of myths and spiritual pedigrees. See, we're living in a time where people will begin to use these words that, that you have to pull out an encyclopedia. Or for some of us, amen, the, what was it called? Britannica? What's it called? And no old folks in here? Or poor folks, because if you had the alphabetical Britannica, you were rolling, amen? Huh? Encyclopedia Britannica? No, 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 no. What's the... What was it called? Right? It was the Encyclopedia. It was a white book with blue on the bottom. I remember when they sold my mom that book, it was like $400, and I was young, and I was like, how much? But that book was going to give you all the knowledge. Yeah, right. She should have stood to a free Bible, amen? <laughs> Can I get an amen? I thought we were like the Joneses when we got those books. <laughs> Mom, can I take one of those to school? No. Anyway, so, 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 so the word of God is what gives us truth. And then he says in verse number five, the purpose of my instruction is that all believers would be filled with love that comes from a pure heart, a clear conscience, and a genuine faith. I love that. Amen. Thank you. Yes, I agree too. Amen. But now watch this. In verse six it says, but some people have missed the whole point. They've missed the whole point. They have turned away from the things, from these things, and spent their time in meaningless discussions. See, when the enemy gets us to begin to argue and fight, and how many of us know there's a spirit behind that? Spirit of confusion. I, we should never see 
an apostolic, a Baptist, a Pentecostal. It don't mean fighting or feuding. That ain't God. That's just not God. Well, but I go to this church and you go to that church. You can wear makeup over there, but I can't wear makeup over That. Let's build on the word. Let's populate heaven together. We need the body of Christ to be healthy, to be whole, to be united. In verse 7, he says this. And he's talking about teachers. They want to be known as teachers of the law of Moses, but they don't know what they are talking about even though they speak so confidently. That's heavy. Let me read it all the way through for you. Amen? 1 Timothy chapter 1, 3 through 7, it says, When I left Macedonia, I urged you to stay there in Ephesus and stop those, to stop those whose teaching is contrary to the truth. Don't let them waste their time in endless discussion or myths of spiritual pedigrees. These things only lead to meaningless speculations, which don't help people live a life of faith in God. The purpose of my instruction is that all believers, somebody say all, all. and all in the Hebrew is what? Amen. <laughs> The purpose of my instruction is that all believers would be filled with the love that comes from a pure heart, a clear conscience, a genuine faith. But some people have missed the whole point. It's not because they heard a different message. They have turned away from these things and spent their time in meaningless discussions. They want to be known as teachers of the law of Moses, but they don't know what they are talking about, even though they speak confidently. That's what I'm talking about, that there's people that are using words now that, that stimulate, amen, or, or, or people say, wow. That, you know, the apostle Paul says that he came with the simplest teaching just so that the people of God would receive. I mean, the boy knew Hebrew. The, he knew the Greek. He could, he could throw down with the best of theologians. But he said, I'm not going to do none of that. I'm going to bring it so simple that no one. Can you imagine? He could have stood up there and he could have been like the MacArthur. Amen. He could have stood there. He could have, man, brought it in all these different ways. But he brought it so simple because that's the love of God. That none should perish. For some of us that our degrees are not that high. I'm talking about myself anyway. We have to understand that we have to know what is truth and we have to stand on the truth and not be moved by what we feel or what tickles our ears. You notice that sometimes the truth hurts, but the truth sets you free. And the truth will set you free. In 1 Timothy and I have one more thing I wanted to share. Here's another scripture that I want to use for you from 2 Timothy chapter 4. And then I'll get to my message. Amen? The Bible says, For the time is coming when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching. They will follow their own desires and will look for teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear. Oh, we're seeing a lot of that lately. But you should keep a clear mind in every situation. Don't be afraid of suffering for the Lord. Work at telling others the good news and fully carry out the ministry that God has given you. As for me, 
My life has already been poured out as an offering to God. The time of my death is near. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. And I have remained faithful. He says these words. And now the prize awaits me. The crown of righteousness. Which the Lord the righteous judge will give to me on the day of his return. And the prize is not just for me. But for all who eagerly look forward to his Appearing. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap. The Apostle Paul here, he's letting us know, amen, that people are going to turn away from what is true. People are looking for something that sounds like the truth, but has loopholes. This isn't a puffing prophet kind of church it's not a sipping saint kind of church it's not even a Halloween type of church amen the Bible is very clear on all those things we got to preach the truth and we can't if you're battling with alcohol marijuana with prescription pills listen the devil is trying to kill you. And you can be free. You have to be able to fight and to say, I'm done with this. I want to be free. I'm telling you, you're looking at a man that was bound to not only alcohol, not only cocaine and methamphetamine. I mean, come on, somebody. If he did it for me, he can do it for you. But you got to want it. You got, and you're not a victim. The very beginning is you got to admit that that was your choice to do those things. And you got to begin to say, the way I open that door, I close it. And you know what happens when you open, when the doors close, you don't go back through them. When the doors close, you got to prepare for the next season in your life. When that door closes, it's over. When Noah's ark was closed, it was too late. When you get to heaven and the pearly gates are closed, it's over. Can I get an amen? We, 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 we got to be ready. Oh, man, I'm burning up here, James. Help me out. We got to be able, amen, to discern the truth and to walk in truth and to love the truth and to allow the truth to set us free, to do a work in us. Because the word of God, it washes us, it transforms us. It's the very word of God that gets the yuck out. It's the very word of God that gets the perversion out. It's the very word of God that gets the you out of you. You ain't trying to hear that one. It's the very word of God that gets the you out of you because you know everything. You know everything and you got an excuse for everything. I've learned that I don't know nothing. And every day I'm learning and every day I'm saying, God, what do you want me to do today? God, I need you, God. I cry now when you just say, God, I need you, I need you. God, I need you in everything. Every moment, every day, I need you to be a husband. I need you to be a father. I need you to be a pastor. I need you just for me, God. I need you. I need you in every decision that I'm going to make. we got to stick to the truth. you got to allow God's work to work in you. Because the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. And the Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth. The Holy Spirit is not going to lead you in the wrong direction. Can I get an amen? amen? I don't know if that was an introduction or that was just for somebody, but here we go. The church needs to be awakened. Amen. And it's the church's job to awaken the church. Paul says, it's not my business to judge those out there. It's not my business. He said, but it is my business to judge the church. Yeah. Amen? Amen? 
So if you get spun around today, don't worry about it. It's because you were going the wrong direction. God just turned you around. Can I get an amen? amen? Here we go. Here we go. Amen. I'm not trying to dance with you. I'm just telling you the truth. Second Timothy chapter one through six. The church needs to be awakened. Remember, that's what I'm talking about. Before I start, tap your neighbor and tell them, are you awakened? And if they gave you a dirty look, amen, it's not. I'm talking about awakened in the spirit, amen? Here we go, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6. That is why I remind you to fan into flame the gracious gift of God. Now, tell, come on, you have a gift. When you're asleep, the fire is out. That is why I remind you, he's reminding you to fan into flame the gracious gift of God. The inner fire, the special endowment which is in you through the laying on of my hands with those of the elders at your ordination. I'm reading from the Amplified. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, of cowardice, or of fear, but he has given us a spirit of power, of love, and of sound judgment, of personal discipline. My God, I want to preach that right there. That's what the church needs. All right, that's what the church needs. Oh, deliver me, deliver me. It's a demon. No, it's called discipline. The demon left a long time ago. You just got to learn to... Where was I? I get excited. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, of cowardice, of fear, but he has given us the spirit of power, of love, and of sound judgment, and personal discipline, abilities that result in calm, well-balanced mind and self-control. My God. I'm getting convicted. I think I lost it last week. How many of us know that when you have a little outburst when somebody takes your parking spot and you go, ah, that ain't self-control. Self-control is saying, I'm a Christian, take the front row and I'll go, I'll go around two more times, amen, and I'll find a parking. I've been with Pastor Nikki in Sacramento downtown on a, on, on a weekend, amen, and she's asking for crazy things. There's two cars, there's two of us, and it's packed, and everybody is waiting, and I'm like, let's just park over there. No, no, God's going to give us a spot, but there's two, no, God will give us a spot, and I'm like, Nikki, let's just park over there. I mean, I'm like, we're losing sunlight, you know, it's, it's crucial here, and she's like, the Lord is going to give us one. I'm like, but there's two of us. And she's praying, Holy Spirit, you can do it. I know you can, Holy Spirit. Amen. And we turn the corner, and there's two cars right in the front pulling out. I've repented of that already, by the way. But we, how many of us know God will meet us? Amen. God will do those things. So when you lose it, amen, God is still working on our self-control. And I think that the church it needs self-control. Especially when everybody has an opinion. That's for another message. I mean, that's good stuff though. Every believer has a right to walk in the power of Christ. You and I carry the power of the Holy Spirit. But some people need to be stirred up in the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about stirred up, man. You remember when you first got saved and you couldn't stop telling everybody about Jesus? You still reeked a little bit like marijuana or, you know, sobaco, I don't know. You know, you still kind of smelled. But everywhere you went, you wanted to tell people about Jesus, amen? 
But now we're saved and sanctified and, you know, you, you don't want to share Jesus. What happened? Where did that fire go? Remember when you first got saved and you used to wake up at three o'clock and you would say, God, I'm just thankful because right now I was out there. I was about to get high. I used to do some crazy things, amen. But God, you set me free. You wake up and you're just so grateful. You can't wait to go to church. You can't wait for the moment for the morning to open up your Bible and to begin to meet God once again. See, I'm trying to tell you that the church, it needs to be stirred up again. You need to fan that flame. You need to get ignited once again in the power of the Holy Spirit. And some people say, well, I don't have it anymore. Yes, you do. You know how I know you still have the Holy Spirit? Because you're here today. Can I get an amen? Because you're here today is the very evidence that God is not done with your life. He's not done. But you got to be stirred up. And I think that the church needs that awakening. The church needs to be stirred up in the things of God. We need more of the Holy Spirit. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 through 5, it says this. For although we live in the natural realm, listen to this. For although we live in the natural realm, we don't wage a military campaign, employing human weapons, using manipulation to achieve our aims. Instead, our spiritual weapons are energized with divine power of effect, e, e, I can't pronounce that word. It doesn't come out right out of my mouth, but it's E F F E C T. Uh, effectively, 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 Eff- effectively. Yeah, that one. To dismantle the defense behind which people hide. We can de- listen to this. We can demolish every deceptive fantasy that a Opposes God and break through every arrogant attitude that is released up in the defiance of the true knowledge of God. We capture like prisoners of war every thought and insist that it bow in obedience to the anointed one. Since we are armed with such dynamic weaponry, we stand ready to punish any trace of rebellion as soon as you choose to complete obedience. You got to understand that the war that is taking place, it's not in necessarily just in the physical. It's starting to manifest. We're starting to see grown. The other day I seen a video of a man about 6'5", with a big old mustache, big old arms, but he had a wig on. And he wanted to go into the women's bathroom. And thank God for the mother, small woman, She was a smaller woman, African-American woman, black woman. And she told that, she told the demon. She told the demon, you are not coming in this bathroom. My children are in there. And she stood her ground. And this grown man was flaunting his wig and trying to, you know, work his way in there. She stood her ground and said, no. We need people to understand that we're li- what we're seeing manifest in the physical is from the war that is taking place in the heavenly realm. There's a demonic agenda trying to pervert and to distort the truth of God. Oh, I want to be Elmo today. Be Elmo. You are who God created you to be. Come on, can I get an Amen. So 
So my prayer here this afternoon is that we would rise up in the knowledge and in the power and in the authority that Christ has given us through his word. We need more spirit-filled believers. How will we see more salvations? How will we see more baptisms in the Holy Spirit if the church isn't praying? Discernment, a spiritual awakening to discern right from wrong. Not everything is Jezebel. Sometimes it's just your choices in your flesh. If you want the anointing of God, you've got to be saturated in the presence of God. You've got to be willing to spend time on your knees broken before the Lord. That's where the anointing comes from. I know that they sell us little oil. You know, we all go buy that oil and we spend whatever, 10, 12 bucks. But that is symbolic for the Holy Spirit. The real oil comes in the crushing. The real oil comes when your face is down on the ground and you're weeping for revival, where you're weeping for your family, where you're crying out for a nation, where you're believing that God's will will be done here on earth. Spiritual discernment. Awaken the church, Lord. The church has been asleep too long. The church is on sabbatical. Everybody, oh, I'm on a sabbatical. I'm on a sabbatical. I mean, well, when do you work? I understand God rested too. But I mean, all the time? People say to me, don't you get tired? I say, yeah, I get tired. But I'd rather be tired in the Lord. From the book of Acts, chapter 8, verse 4. Listen to this. The religious folks always try to stop and get angry when the move of God is taking place. Amen? In the book of Acts, a great revival had broke out. In the book of Acts, chapter 8, verse 4, the Bible says this. Now those believers, I'm reading from the Amplified. Now those believers who had been scattered, amen, persecution came. Remember, persecution came upon the church. And when persecution came, they scattered everywhere, amen? Now those believers who had been scattered went from place to place preaching the word, the good news of salvation through Christ. See, there may be persecution, but that doesn't mean you stop preaching the gospel. But my calling is over because I'm going back to prison. Well, maybe he's giving you a Paul and Silas calling. Don't you stop preaching, amen? Don't stop sharing the word of God because of where you're at. When the word of God is in you, it's like a fire that is shot up in your bones and you can't be quiet. You just want to tell everybody. Hey, mailman, Mr. Mailman, hey, come here. Let me give you a flyer. You look like you need to be saved, David. <laughs> Especially the ones that throw the boxes on the green. In verse 5, it says this. This was a new church, a young church. It says in verse 5, Philip the evangelist went down to the city of Samaria and he began proclaiming Christ, the Messiah, the anointed to them. The crowds gathered and were paying close attention to everything Philip said as they heard the message and saw the miraculous signs which he was doing, validating his message. Come on, somebody. Oh, I wish I had that up there right now. That means that as he preached, God was showing up. God was showing out. 
miracles were taking place. Not only because he was preaching the truth, but because he was living right. Look at what it says. The crowds gathered and were paying close attention. God, I'm getting all kinds of messages right here, right now. When you go out and you share, people are listening, but they're also watching. Jesus said this about the Pharisees. He says, what they say do, but don't do what they do. Jesus was watching. Wait a minute. They're saying the right thing, but their life is not the right example. The crowds gathered and were paying close attention to everything Philip said. And they heard the message and saw the miraculous signs which he was doing validating his message for unclean spirits demons shouting loudly were coming out of many who were possessed and many who had been paralyzed and lame were healed so there was a great rejoicing in that city so here we see that the men of God is out there and he is preaching, Philip the evangelist. And God is moving through his preaching. God is moving and the Holy Spirit is evident that demons are coming out. Doesn't matter what kind of demon, a demon is a demon. If it's a demon of addiction, if it's a demon of pornography, it's just a demon of murder, amen, it doesn't matter. It needs to come out. It's called an unclean spirit. So you have the Holy Spirit and you have the spirit of Antichrist. And it's, if it's not of the Holy Spirit, it's an unclean spirit. And demons are coming out and people are being healed as the man of God is watching. And I believe that that's exactly the way the church should be today. Thank God for good preaching that, you know, that teaches us and it, and it makes us grow in wisdom, amen. And praise God that you pull out your Dag's Bible and your enduring word, amen, because of a message you heard and you want to go deeper. Nothing wrong with that. But what good is it to have all the knowledge and no manifestation of the power of God? An authentic move of God. People witness. People are healed. We were just in Gilroy and there was a, I believe, a young man, like 15, 16 years old, that we were praying for who has tumors in, in, in various places. And man, we began to pray right there, man. And my wife began to feel things moving in his body. And I told him, do you believe? I said, because if you don't believe, yeah, I've already prayed, but if you believe, man, I want you to grab my hands. And he said, I believe. And we began to pray again, believing. And I said, you will be a testimony, not because of the man, because of the power of God you gotta believe the, the, the work of God is evident amen God is not gonna be mocked so Philip is there and he's preaching a message and God is moving and man demons are coming out and people are being healed and it's just the power of God so powerfully that is taking place but watch this in Acts verse 8 in the ninth verse something takes place now there was a man named Simon who previously practiced magic somebody say that's not of God don't go get your palm read. Don't tear at cards. No third eye. No, uh, no Yu-Gi-Oh or, or, or what's the what's the um, the magazine that the, the books, anime, all that stuff. It's not of God. You know why there's so many false things? Because people think it's too hard to live by the truth. So they're always looking and always searching and trying this and trying that. 
But the truth is simple when you surrender. The truth is simple when you love God. The truth is simple when you yield your flesh to the Lord. So this man, Simon, now there was a man named Simon who previously practiced magic in the city and amazed the people of Samaria, claiming to be someone great. Can I preach to you for about five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and then I'll be done. I need you to catch this though. Magic is witchcraft. Marijuana is witchcraft. Oh, but it's legal now. So is drinking milk. Go drink all the milk you want. <laughs> Amen. When you research the word pharmakia, it's brooded back to witchcraft. But I just need rest because of my insomnia or my panic attacks. What you need is deliverance and what you need is Jesus. Yeah. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Why would you want a 10 minute rest from a high when you can be free, amen, eternally? Where you can have rest, amen, in Christ. Where you don't got to keep popping or when you don't got to keep smoking, amen. Now, let me tell you the truth. If you like getting high, just admit it and say, I just like getting high. I just, I'm just, I just love doing, but don't say I hate it, amen, but you really love it. Because God will only set you free when you say, man, I'm bound to this. God, I hate it. Help me, God, to hate what you hate, God. I am a temple of the Holy Spirit, and I don't want to put this junk in my body any longer. And God will meet you. God will set you free. I remember when I got set free from meth, I said, man, Lord, I love you, God, but I'm going to be honest with you, God. I think I love this more than I love you. And I said, man, God, I, I'm, I, I love you. I, I, I know you're real, God. You spoke to me when I was a little boy. I prayed to you when I was a little boy. You've always been in my life, but I can't stop using this thing. I'm going to need you and the power of the Holy Spirit to set me free. I didn't have no withdrawals. I didn't have methadone. I was instantly delivered because I was real before a holy God. And he set me free. Let's get back to Simon. Now remember the Bible says in verse number nine of the book of Acts chapter eight. Now there was a man named Simon who previously practiced magic in the city and he amazed. How many people know that they love to be amazed? Amazed by fancy speech or all these clever things. Amazed the people of Samaria claiming to be someone great. Verse 10 says this, they all paid the great, they all paid to a great deal of attention to him from the least to the greatest saying this man is what is called to be the great power of God. Come on. Some, some, some people can get really twisted. When you begin to call magic a work of God, something is not right. Number one, when God performs a miracle or heals somebody, the man should never get the glory. Because the glory always belongs to the Father. Now, in verse 11, it says they were paying attention to him because for a long time he had mystified and dazzled them with magic. Verse 12 says this, but when they believed Philip as he preached the good news about the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were being baptized, both men and women. Even Simon, here we go. Even Simon believed Philip's message of salvation. And after being baptized, he continued on with Philip and as he watched 
the attesting signs and great miracles taking place, he was constantly amazed. That's the problem. When the apostles in Jerusalem heard that people of Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent for Peter and John to them. They came down and they prayed for them and they, that they might receive the Holy Spirit. Listen to this. For he had not yet fallen on any of them. They had simply been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus as his possession. Then Peter and John, they laid hands on them one by one, and they received the Holy Spirit. Now when Simon saw, Simon, remember the magician. Now when Simon saw that the Spirit was given through the laying on of the apostles' hands, he offered them money. Ah! You can't buy the anointing. You can't buy the anointing. The Holy Spirit is not for sale. I don't care how much crypto you have. I don't care how much rubies you have. I don't care how much silver or gold or Bitcoin you have. You cannot buy the Holy Ghost. It says that now when Simon saw that the spirit was given through the laying on of the apostles' hands, he offered them money. Say, give me the authority and the power so that anyone whom I lay my hands on may receive the Holy Spirit. I feel a little manipulation going on there. But Peter... Verse 20, but Peter said to him, may your money be destroyed along with you because you thought you could buy the free gift of God with money. Notice it's free. But it costs everything. It'll cost you waking up and praying. It'll cost when everyone else on a Friday night is going, amen, to Applebee's, but not you because you're in the presence of God and you've been redeemed by a holy God, amen, when everyone else on a Sunday is watching football, but you're in the house of God, amen, when everyone else is driving nice cars with nice rims and all this craziness, but you say, I can't afford that because I pay my tithe and offering and the kingdom of God is important to me amen because it costs you the anointing of God when you're in the presence of God it costs you time amen it costs you your devotion amen it costs you everything spiritually can't buy that so Peter rebukes the spirit the man but Peter said to him, may your money be destroyed along with you because you thought you could buy the free gift of God with money. You have no part or share in our matters because your heart and your motive was with a purpose is not right before God. So repent of your wickedness. Come on, how many of us, when was the last time you heard a, a message? Of, come on, you got to repent of your wickedness. God is with you. He knows you, you know, you're struggling with your. God will set you free. Let me preach the truth. Look at what he says in verse 22. So repent of this wickedness of yours and pray to the Lord that if possible, this thought of your heart may be forgiven to you. That's the kind of preaching I like. He's letting know. You know why? It, it may sound hard, but the man of God is concerned about his soul. So repent of this wickedness of yours and pray the Lord that if possible, this thought of yours in your heart may be forgiven for you. Then he says in verse 23, for I see that you are provoked by bitterness and bound to sin. But Simon answered, Simon, the sorcerer, says, but Simon answered, pray that the Lord, pray to the Lord for me, both of you, so that nothing of what you have said will come upon me. 
Can I preach? I got 10 minutes left. I'm going to use every one of them. We just read that Philip had baptized. You remember? Let me take you back there. I, I need you to, I need you. I need you to know that what you're reading is truth. Acts chapter 8, verse 12, where we started. But when they believed Philip, as he preached the good news about the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were being baptized by both men and women. Even Simon believed Philip's message of salvation. And after being what? Baptized. So he was baptized, but something didn't take place. Yet Philip was a new believer, a new pastor, so he probably didn't have the discernment because there was a false anointing taking place. So God always brings, amen, he sent the man of God and Peter that said, whoa, 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 uh, something is not right here. This is a false anointing. I understand, Philip, I'm not here to rebuke you, but I want to let you know that this man's heart is not sincere. This man's heart is with the motive. This man has an agenda. I'm trying to teach you. Are you with me? He was baptized and getting rebuked. People would leave the church. I can't believe. False anointing, you got to recognize. The only way you're going to recognize a false anointing is to be saturated in the presence of God. To be spiritually awakened. To be awakened the power of the Holy Spirit. To know what is right and what is wrong. Wait a minute, something is not right. Something is just not adding up. Holy Spirit, I need you to show me. Number one, not to judge the person, but because the person is a soul and it's under a spirit of deception. Notice what Peter begins to call out. He calls it out. He says in verse 21, again, remember, you have no part or share in this matter. Because your heart, your motive, and your purpose is not right before God. You want this gift for self-gain. You want this gift to be recognized. Oh, come on. You want a YouTube channel. You just want a bigger platform. You just want more followers. You're not really doing it for the people. See, Peter, everywhere he, everywhere he went and he preached the truth, he had very little friends. They wanted to kill him and stone him and all those things. Just like Paul. When you preach truth, you're not very popular. You're hated. And people of deception won't even say, he's judging you. Judging you? Telling you the truth. Because the truth sets you free. The truth is what's going to get you into heaven. And I apologize for any pastor that is not telling you the truth. Because that is our responsibility to equip the church, not only for the work of the ministry, but to get into heaven. It's our job to lead you to Jesus, not to man, not to me, but to Jesus. So Peter is calling things out. He is rebuking it straight out. You have no part or share in this matter because your heart with the motive or purpose is not right before God. He says to him, listen to this, so repent. So repent of your wickedness of yours and pray to the Lord that if possible, this that's in your heart may be forgiven you. For I see that you are provoked by bitterness and bound to sin. And the man had just been baptized. It was a water show. No transformation. Young Philip didn't catch this. I get it. Man, 
Whenever anybody comes to church and they're here and they're like, where's Manuel? Manuel wants me to baptize. I'm told I was going to baptize him today, but maybe next week, okay? Um, I get excited, amen? I get excited. Praise God for that. And I'm sure that Philip was probably the same way. Man, another one, another one for the kingdom, yes. But Peter came on another level. And Peter said, wait a minute, something is not right. And that's the discernment that the church needs in this hour. That's the discernment that the church needs. That's the awakening that I'm talking about. That we would know when something is not right. Not to judge, not to point fingers, not to throw stones, but to say, hey, wait a minute, something is not right. A false anointing. A false humility. You see, a person that is filled with the Holy Spirit will discern that. That's my prayer. That's my message. And it's simple. And I can have an altar call right now or I could just say, we're done and let's go home. You know why? Because I think I need the Holy Spirit to reveal what just took place. Sometimes we come up and a man lays hands on us. And I love laying hands and casting things out. And I love seeing people healed. But sometimes it takes away from the message. Like I almost took away from the worship. Are we catching these things? Because some of these things are in our own home. Things that our children are still doing that we're turning the other cheek that we know. I just met with one, I think three people in Gilroy that the Holy Spirit is just speaking to them. And they're saying, man, God is telling me to throw this stuff away and throw this stuff away. And I said, you better make sure it's the Holy Spirit because if it's not the Holy Spirit, right now you're good. But if you get weird later on, you're going to come back and you're going to ask me for that money. And I ain't giving it to you. (laughs) But Pastor Fernando said, no, I preached the message the Holy Spirit told you. Pastor, but it's thousands of dollars. I said, good, so what? Get rid of it. It's the very thing that is keeping you bound. It's the very thing that is affecting your children and they're having nightmares. It's the very thing, amen, that is holding you from breakthrough. Discernment. See, when the Holy Spirit is genuine in our lives, he will reveal those things to us. He's going to reveal them. I want to know what's in my house. And if it's our children that are watching something, if it's our children that are doing something, it's our job to teach them. It's our job to point out through scripture, hey, this isn't of God. And whatever you give up for God, God will always bless you with something better. Listen to me. God God is a giver, not a taker. You think that God doesn't know how much you spend on that demonic stuff? I guarantee you that the moment you throw it out, when the Lord told me to flush the meth, it was not a, look at how God does things. I would always have my little sacks and, you know, all that stuff. And I would say, oh, when I'm done with this one, I'm going to, that's it, that's it. Never, years and years and years and years, lies and Fall on the floor and licking the floor like a fool? Can I preach? But I'll tell you what. When I was sincere, when I was sincere, it was a sack. You would think it was easier when you have a bag of residue than when you have a sack. But you see, the heart was sincere and it didn't matter what was in the hand. God said, flush it. God said, give it to me. Throw it away. 
And I remember flushing that thing. Man, from here to here, whoo, was like eternity. The thoughts that went through my head, you're in debt, you should just sell it, you're dumb. Oh, come on, somebody. The devil will lie to you. Heck no. I'm not trying to poison anybody. And I remember, ah, when I flushed that, I felt liberation. I felt change. I felt freedom. I felt the love of God. I felt an overflow of the Holy Spirit. I want you to stand to your feet. This man, Simon, his heart was not right. He wanted something for the wrong reason. When we come to Christ, just be genuine with him. He knows your battle. got to catch what's coming in the house of God. Don't get me wrong. Praise God if a witch comes here. But I pray she renounce everything at this altar. I pray that just like in the book of Acts, she bring all her books and all that junk and that it be burned. Amen. That she be free. I pray that if an atheist comes through those doors, that he would say, man, I just don't know. And even what I'm feeling right now, I don't know what it is. I'm confused, but I want to know the truth because the truth will set you free. The truth will break every bondage through the anointing of God on our lives. Muslims are seeking. Muslims are hungry. I was able to pray for a Buddhist today. Buddhist? Buddhist. Buddhist. You're the chubbier guy than me. And all the Lord said is, you're seeking answers. You're seeking truth. And all I prayed was, God, reveal yourself. Oh, my wife said, God, reveal yourself to her. But then at a later time, we didn't even know. We prayed the same prayer. And I said, the Lord is showing me that you want answers. And God is going to show up. And he's going to reveal himself to you because you're searching the truth will set you free but it's what you do with the truth are you going to apply it in your life when these people come through these doors the anointing of God should be so heavy in here that I don't care if it's a sack of dope if it's a pipe if it's a needle if it's a playboy magazine I don't care what it is if it's a witch that they would just say man I'm done with this I'm done I want the life that Christ has for me I'm tired of running. I'm tired of being rebellious. I'm tired of looking for for door number one, door number two, amen, garage A, garage B, and all these plans and all these agendas and making all these excuses and never finding what stands right before you, truth, which is Jesus. We need more of the anointing of God in this house, in our lives in our cities, in our marriages, in this nation. Every head bow and every eye closed. Father, we thank you for your word. I thank you, Lord, that we can learn from Philip, Lord, who was zealous who was doing your work, God, but still had room for growth. Let us never think, Lord, that we have arrived.
Let us never think that we know everything. And I thank you, Lord, for those that you place over us, God. As Peter, Lord. And John, when they heard, they went. And because of the anointing that they were carrying, it was revealed. Father, let this church, Lord, be a house of miracles. Let this church be of a house of miracle signs and wonders where people are set free, God, from addictions, from demons, from perversion, from whatever it is, God. Let us start with being delivered from self. Even hatred. There's people, I just feel the Lord saying right now, there's people that are even mad at themselves, that hate their life. And God says, I want to turn it around. I want to turn it around. It was just a season. But you're getting ready to walk into a new season in your life. A season where I'm going to show you that I'm with you. I'm going to show you that my spirit is still inside of you. I'm going to show you that I haven't forgotten you. I'm going to show you that I've been interceding. I'm going to show you that the plan and the purpose is still there because the giftings and the callings of God are without repentance. If you're here today and you say, that's me, that's me. I need to get this right. I need more of the anointing. I need more discernment. I need more of the Holy Spirit. I don't want to fall for these fancy teachings. I don't want to fall for this new uh, occult stuff or this new um, new age stuff or all this crazy Crazy different doctrine and all this confusion, all these lies of this counterfeit from what is true. And it is Jesus. I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life, said Jesus. And no man comes to the Father but by me.